building spirituality, family, health, and business. This is the Giant Builders with Lois Wyant. Hey, welcome Giant Builders. We're here with Carrie Martin and Carrie is going to help. I, you know what, honestly, I invited Carrie to be a speaker, a guest on the podcast because I need help. So mm -hmm. it happens to be that you guys get to listen. So I hope that you enjoy the conversation as Carrie helps me figure out how to plan my meals. So Carrie, welcome. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thank you. Um, I am a former personal chef. I used to be a chef for busy moms and then we adopted a daughter and I suddenly had a lot less time. So uh, I stopped cooking and I transitioned my business online to help moms with meal planning. I'm a, a coach, a meal planning coach. Uh, and so I just help make it easy and simple and sustainable um, and really make it a habit instead of it being some big thing, big obstacle that you have to overcome. We just make it simple and easy, a little few steps at a time. Confession, my two biggest problems with meal planning, okay? Number one is planning ahead far enough so I can get what I need at the grocery store so I don't have to run every day to the grocery mm -hmm. store for like one thing. Mm -hmm. And number two is planning ahead so that the meat that I need is defrosted. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so when our kids were at home, um, we had what we called the, the mom surprise, in which case it would happen to be something that I happened to pull out of the freezer, put in the crock pot, throw in a cream soup and some vegetables. And it was a mom surprise. And sometimes it worked out really well. And sometimes it was not as good. Mm -hmm. So Help us figure out how to do life with our meal plannings. What's your, what's your number one tip? Well, I, first I'll say you're not alone. Those are two common things that I hear. So um, starting earlier is one thing I always um, encourage moms to do. And I do this with my clients. I recommend that you start meal planning on Thursday. Um, I call it think ahead Thursday because it's just the day that you start thinking about meal planning. Like you get it on your radar. You think about maybe the recipes that you want to make for the following week. So you have Thursday, you have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday all before Monday rolls around. And so it gives you, you know, it gives you some wiggle room. Life can happen and you can still stay on track. You have time to get your recipes and make your grocery list and go to the store. And it's not all Sunday afternoon. You look up and think, Oh, what are we going to eat this week? Um, so that is uh, one of my biggest tips. And that's really where I start with people is you need to start earlier in the week. So it's less pressure. So where do I find easy recipes? I don't, I don't have time to spend an hour preparing a meal. What's some easy tips to cooking? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and it's kind of one of my soapbox things is like, what's easy, right? What does that mean? Is it fast? Is it um, not a lot of prep? Is it a crock pot? Is it like easy means different things to different people? And also, you know, I think a crock pot recipe is, is easy, but it takes a long time. Right. So um, I generally, you know, push back a little bit on the easy part, just because if you prepare ahead, then any, almost any recipe can be easy and it can be quick. Um, it, it's all about how you want to schedule your time. So that's what I also work with my clients on is like, how does your week look? Like, when can you take 15 minutes and prep the ingredients that are going to go in your crock pot meal. Or, you know, if it's going to be taco night on Wednesday, can you brown the brown and season the meat ahead of time? And then it's ready to go. Like there's just things you can do that make recipes um, easy. And so when I start asking questions like that, like what does easy mean to you or what's quick, then we kind of uncover what the real 
issue is with recipes that, that people have tried in the past and what makes them feel hard. Cause I really find that what makes them feel hard is different for everybody. And so once we kind of uncover that, then we, um, you know, really find out what recipes are good. And I'll tell you my best recipe tip is create a recipe hub. So a collection of recipes that you know how to make, you know, you like, you know, your family likes, you know, you can find those ingredients at the grocery store. So many moms are just kind of grabbing for different recipes or they find one online and like, that's fine if you have the time and want to experiment, but most of us, (laughs) you know, want some guarantees, right. With recipes and meal planning. So it takes a little bit of time, but once you have that collection of recipes and if it's big enough, then you have variety. And you just have a go-to spot every Thursday. You take out your recipes, what, what, if it's digital, if they're hard copy, and you know that those recipes are going to work for you. I don't know if that exactly answers your question, but uh, it's it just makes a life, life a lot easier that way. <laughs> yeah, that that is great. That great suggestions, and I really honestly had not thought about the fact of you know brown the taco meat ahead of time. I mean. That's such an easy thing to do. I, I think of that. <laughs> do you have any other tips in that direction? Uh, well, yes. One of my best prep ahead tips is when you either get home from the store or your groceries are delivered, prep your ingredients right away. So I say, don't even put them in the fridge from the bag. Just take them out of, out of the bag and brown and season the meat or dice the onion or whatever it is, whatever you have coming up for the week, go ahead and prep your ingredients and, and, and start thinking of it as part of your grocery time. Um, and so some people give themselves just enough time to go to the store and get home and put stuff away and then they're rushing to the next thing. But if you can give yourself a little window there to start prepping, if you have 10 minutes, fine. If you have 30 minutes, great. Any dent you can put in it is gonna get you ahead. And so then it's just a matter of, when I brown and season the meat, does it need to go in the fridge or does it need to go in the freezer? But either way, it's done ahead of time. Um, And you mentioned taking things out of the freezer to thaw. My best tip for that is just put a reminder in your phone um, and just have your phone go off. And and if you're planning ahead, it's like when you're planning ahead, some of these things, like you're saying, why didn't I think of that? Like some of these things make a lot more sense when you imagine I've planned ahead. And so part of my planning, just like choosing recipes is I get my phone out and I just say, you know, don't forget to take the meat out of the freezer for Thursday's dinner or whatever. And then it's there and you won't forget. (laughs) Good tip. Do you suggest planning the full three meals for each day or focus on dinner? Do you allow some meals just to be surprise or? Ah, yeah, that's a great question. So I find that dinner is the focus of most of my clients. It's what they want to fix the most. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I always start there, but I also, you know, breakfast and lunch and snacks are also, you know, great things that you can plan. So if you're just getting started or you're just like at a frustrated point, I would say start with one meal, whichever one comes up for you as the most frustrating and start there and then you can build on it. Uh, I always say meal planning is not all or nothing. You know, it's not every meal for every day for the rest of your life that who wants to do that, right? (laughs) So it can be just dinner. It can be two dinners next week. It can be two lunch, like whatever you can get your arms around and start, you can always build on it. Uh, But I do find dinner is the most, um, you know, is, is really the most problem area. It's the time that moms want to like get their family together and get around the table and have it be stress-free. And so that's what I focus on most. And I also find that when I ask people, what does success look like for you with meal planning? I have never had somebody say seven days a week. Like, it's just not, it's like in a, in the back of our mind. And so it keeps us from doing it because we think we want our, all of our meals planned. And I've never had anybody say that to me more often. It's if I could sit down at the table with my family, with a new meal, four nights a week, three nights a week, that would be winning. I can eat, like we can eat leftovers one night. We can be impulsive one night. 
Maybe we love pizza night. My basic approach to your question of like, can it be just whatever you want to make or impulsive or um, a surprise is 80, 20 plan 80% of whatever's most important to you. If that's all meals or if it's dinners, whatever it is, plan 80% of it with ingredients you like, you feel like it's healthy. It's what you want to eat. And then 20% of the time you do whatever that can be more planned meals, or it can be takeout or it can be whatever. And it really kind of lets the guilt go, you know, cause you know, 80% of the time we're eating exactly the way I want us to. And the rest of the time we can do whatever. And, and you get rid of that stress. Like, I don't know if you experience this, but the family wants to do something, you know, that maybe isn't that healthy. And mom is stressed because meal planning has been a disaster. And so she's already worried about the kinds of food they're eating. And then it's like time to go for takeout and she's feeling even worse. And then the whole family is like, mom, why are you so worried? You know, it's just like this vicious cycle. So if mom can get in a place where most of the time she feels good about what the family's eating, then when you go have fun, you can actually let go and have fun. So any tips on meal planning, like if you have a or one or two picky eaters, how do you work around that? Oh, yes. Picky eaters. <laughs> um, so another one of my uh, just kind of meal planning fundamentals is it's really not your job to make every mouth in your family happy every single day. And I find once I you know, talk to moms about this and get a little deeper, they're used to, well, what do you want to eat? Well, what do you want to eat? Oh, well, I made this and you don't like it. So let me make something else. And so there is a little bit of like, what do you want to do? Right. And so what do you want meal planning to look like? Do you want to make three meals for all the different tastes? Or do you wish everybody would eat what you make? And so, and I get different answers to that question. And some people want to make more things and some people don't, but there is a freedom in, it's really not your job to try to please every single person with every single meal. It might just be something that you've fallen into. And so of course, if the if you offer that, right, they're going to take you up on it. <laughs> so, you know, one thing I really encourage is um, to just get input on what everyone wants to eat. So, within re like you could have a few options and you could say, okay, Susie for your meal this week, which one of these three do you want? You know, and you know that Susie likes them. Okay. Tim for, you know, just ask your kids if they're, you know, an age where they can choose. And so everybody kind of has their night, right? So they feel like they're included and there's a night that they know they're going to have something they love and you get a night as mom and your partner gets a night, like everybody gets a night. And you don't get to complain about somebody else's night because you get a night too. And it all, so that's something that I have really found gets rid of a lot of the complaining, you know, that, and, and if it's like a texture issue or, you know, something like that, then I just work with my clients like individually on what kinds of things their family um, can eat. But if it's really just a, you know, picky eater, you know, who just wants to, mom to make whatever they really want, then often, you know, just a few check-ins on, on why that's happening is a good place to start. And they kind of find a rhythm where, you know, you'll get something that you like every once in a while and the other meals are good too. <laughs> yeah. In your planning, any tips towards grocery shopping? Mm, um, have a list. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that's definitely one everybody has heard, but I find most people don't really do it. Um, don't go hungry and just base it on your meal plan. So you choose your recipes and then you make your grocery list based on your recipes. Um, not by memory, you know, not if you're finding, you know, just random recipes on the last food blog you were on. Um, you know, sometimes you come across recipes that either your store doesn't have, or you've never cooked with before, or you like, don't make it complicated, um, make a list and then check what ingredients you already have at home. Cause a lot of times you already have a lot of the stuff and you don't want to double buy, you don't want to waste food. 
And then you, your grocery shopping is much more streamlined and you're probably buying less than you used to. So it's faster. Uh, one, because you have a list, so you know what you're buying, but two, you've seen what you already have at home. And so you're not double buying. And so that makes it, um, you know, that makes it easier. I definitely recommend some kind of app or software to create a grocery list for you, you know, keep it somewhere like digitally where you can, you know, I find so many moms just like take out a post-it note and start taking their list down, you know, but then you lose that or, you know, you're in another room and that post-it note's not in that room. <laughs> or, leave it, or leave it at home when you go to the grocery oh, store. There right? you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So there's just so many different apps out there that, that help with that. I have a software that I use with my clients that puts their meal plans together and, and creates a grocery list for them. And so that's just something that, um, you know, is definitely it definitely just makes life easier. It's one of those resources that I, that I definitely think um, is helpful. So what does a first meeting look like with you? Uh, Well, for my one-on-one clients, I, we talk about how to make it work for their family and for them. And the first step of that really is what do you like to eat? What do you not like to eat? Um, So that could be allergies, that could be dietary restrictions, that could be just my family doesn't eat tomatoes, you know, I hate peanut butter. So things like that, we talk about what what do you want to eat and not eat. Uh, And then your schedule, like, is there, do you want to take a chunk of time on the weekend? And you know, do some prep then? Do you want to prep for 15 minutes every day? Do you work at home and your lunch break, you could go into the kitchen and, you know, prep a few things, or that's when you put stuff in the crock pot. Like we talk about what would, what would be the best schedule for meal planning. And, you know, that's really, that's really the key is when are you, when should I deliver your meal plans? Because then you're going to go to the grocery store and then you're going to start the prep schedule. And I create a step-by-step guide for my clients. So on Thursday, do this on Friday, do this and every day that you want that we've identified that they want to do something for meal planning, you know, there's a step-by-step guide for making it as quick as possible. That's where we start is really customizing it to the person's taste buds and their family and their schedule. So that's, what's going to make it stick. Uh, I do like to just say to all moms and all women that just because you're a woman or just because you're a mom does not mean that you know how to do this. I, I come across this it's, all the time. It's not a genetic thing. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did not learn how to cook for my mom or my grandma. I, I don't know if my mom meal planned. Like I don't, I never did any of that stuff with her. I enjoy cooking. And, and so I learned because it was something I enjoyed, but just because you are a mom or a woman doesn't mean, you know, how to cook doesn't mean you like to cook doesn't mean you know how to meal plan. And um, a lot of my clients are entrepreneurs. And so, you know, kind of parallel it to business. Like when you first started your business, you did not know all the different parts that you that go into that, right? It's like so much bigger than we ever know until we start, but you get help, right? And, And there's no shame about getting help. You don't even question it. You say, what resources do I need so I can put this together? But when it comes to meal planning, there's a hesitation or a sense of failure or something that kind of comes along with that in in our culture that moms and women don't necessarily like to ask for help because they feel like they should know. And, you know, I just say that that's, there's no logic or truth to that. And if you can Get re- I mean, if that's a YouTube video, if that's a food blog you love, if it's a meal planning coach, whatever you need, go get it, you know, just go get it. And that's really going to be the ticket to making it work as opposed to trying something and it fails and then trying something else. And, and so I just kind of like to release moms from that because there, there just isn't that pressure. And a lot of moms want to be the one that cooks for their family, right? There's kind of, we kind of joke like, oh, I'd love a personal chef, you know, 
But a lot of moms really wouldn't love that from a time perspective or a stress perspective, they think they would, but a lot of women want to be the one that cooks. It's a way they serve their family. It's a way they love their family, but it doesn't mean you have to actually love cooking. You can get help for it and still have it all come together easily and without stress and overwhelm. And so I just like to you know, remind everyone that it, that it's possible, you know, it, you don't have to go it alone. And it, if it is something you want to do for your family, it's, it's easier than you think. Oh, great tips. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that, that sounded like a really good closing thought there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad. I hope it helps. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So how do people get in contact with you? Uh, Well, the best place to find me, I hang out mostly in my Facebook group, uh, which is Practical Meal Planning Moms on uh, Facebook. So that would be the the best place to find me. And uh, I have a group coaching program that's starting next month. And so uh, if that's, you know, kind of what I'm talking about in my group right now. So if anybody wants more information on that, I would love to share it, but that's where I'm hanging out most is my group. And my business is kitchen life transformation on Facebook. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the tips. I have a grandchildren visiting pretty soon. So I'm going to use all the same ideas there. It's it kind of, it's somewhat easier with just the two of us, but still I get overwhelmed with the planning process. So listeners, it doesn't change even when your kids grow up. I think that also it gets harder when they're teenagers too uh, for planning meals, just because their schedules are so busy and they're eating so much more food. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. Martin and thank you giant builders we'll see you next week thank you for listening this has been the giant builders with Lois Wyant <laughs>